munching as we get ready to go live. Hi, everybody. I'm Mark Allen. I'm munching a dried apricot from Melissa's. They have given us a cornucopia of fabulous produce for our show today. We're going to celebrate Passover. Um, actually, we're going to be doing that in the next couple of weeks. Two weeks ago, we, um, we did uh, Easter, and we had a great Italian Easter uh, pasta. We did two. Well, today we're going to do a couple of different things. You will not believe it, because this is going to knock your socks off. Uh, if nothing else, the horseradish will. I'm Mark Allen. This is Mark Allen Cooks. Join us right now. Well, welcome to Mark Allen Cooks Your Dinner. Um, uh, I've got a special thank, uh, thank you and shout out to Carol, who's really uh, uh, helped us a lot today. So thank you, dear. I appreciate that. You've been really terrific in, in, uh, in going above and beyond today. All right, let us go to Orange County, California, and we will speak with our new friend, Judy. Um, uh, <laughs> Judy, come on up here. Yeah, there you are, uh, uh, Judy. And Judy is uh, a number of things. First of all, she's written a great book, and I don't know if you can see it over here. It's called Cooking Jewish, 332 Recipes from the uh, Rabinovitz uh, family by Judy Bart uh, Kansigor. Kansigor, is that correct? You got it. Got it. All right. So, Judy, uh, first of all, does 300, 532 have any significance, or did you just pick that? No. What happened was when I turned in the manuscript, there were a thousand recipes, and my editor said, what if somebody drops it on their toe? They would have a lawsuit. So we had a cut, 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 and that's <laughs> what it came down to. It's a very big book. Uh, we're going to be making a couple of things. We're going to be making, we're going to start by making salmon gefilte fish for the Passover holiday. We're also going to make some horseradish to go with that. And we're going to uh, make some um, truffle horosis. And that's from a friend of ours, isn't it? Was that the one that's... Well, I took a couple of recipes from Fela Levy. And I combined them and kind of did my twist uh, with her idea. But they're Yemenite Herosa truffles. Well, we're going we're gonna, to uh, uh, talk about that a little bit later on. If you have comments and you're on Facebook uh, or YouTube, you can say hello and um, uh, make comments uh, while we're doing the show. We're going to start right now. Uh, I've got... Uh, and by the way, the recipes will be up in the next day or two on YouTube. What um, what we have what I I've done is I've cut the recipe kind of in half, so uh, uh, I'm throwing in about uh, one and a half onions and into my food processor. Okay, and we're going to chop those up. And Judy wants me to chop these. I think you can see it, yeah. Judy, looks good to me. Yep. What do you think? Yes, looks excellent. You don't want to go any further right. than that. So we'll take those out. Now, I don't know why, and maybe you do, why is gefilte fish associated primarily with Passover. Any idea? That's you don't know question. Either. <laughs> well, I think a filter fish goes with everything. But it's just one of those dishes that people associate with that stuff that comes in a jar. And when when you say you're serving a filter fish, or at least in my family, if I said I was serving a filter fish, no especially my kids and my grandkids. <laughs> I call it Timba. And then they love it. So I don't know. Is there no lying in cooking? I'm not sure. Got Ooh. it. We have 
have some comments? Oh. Um, I agree to see Judy on here. I mean, you're going to have to read it to me because I can't read it. It's too small. Yes. Sue Pressburg. Hi. Oh. Great to see Judy on your show. Oh, great. And and, another fan. And we have Mary. And Mary says you look great, uh, Judy. And <laughs> you do. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> so, uh, Mary, how do how do I look? Uh, uh, <laughs> he looks pretty good, Mary. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm going to uh, chop some carrots and um, celery. Again, these came to us from uh, from Melissa's. These are huge carrots, uh, and Mark, by the way. You got the parsley in there as well. Oh, I don't. Thank you. Yeah, I throw the parsley that in. in. I've got some parsley as well. Mm -hmm. And let's now. There's a, there is a technique. How do you want this fine? A little bit more. A little bit more. Yeah, that. How's that? It's, yeah, that's good. All right, good. I can see that in the oh, the parsley is just amazing. Smells good, doesn't it? It does. Now I'm going to put this in with the onions. Yeah. Okay. Here's Mary. Now, you're doing half, so you're going to get well. I'm sorry, say that again? You're doing half the recipe, so you're going to get 12. Yes. I do want to mention that if you make the whole recipe, they freeze beautifully. Um, the whole thing with freezing them is wrapping them properly. So I find if I take each one when they're cold and wrap it separately in a saran wrap or something like that, and then put all of them in Ziploc bags. They freeze great. You can take one out for lunch, you know, or as many as you need. And you can even make them in advance. I like to cook in advance for half. The less I have to do the day before I'm having a Seder, the happier I am. Got it. Well, at Hanukkah so time, I know happy. that um, people like to um, freeze latkes in advance. Yes, and you can have to roast them to heat them up. Right. That's, that's all right, here we go. We're going to put in the salmon now. I'd like to just put mm -hmm. in all the salmon at once. Is that okay? I've got it. Well, the way I do it, I put them through the feed tube if you've got that set up. All right. Okay. Yeah. I am. This is the boss. Right, By the way, thank you, Mary, for your kind comments that I had to ask for. Um, okay. Let's see how this yeah, works. Yeah, you probably... These are about a pound of salmon. Yeah, and if people cut them in strips, they just get going. I'm sorry? ...the uh, tube, so that's... Yeah. I said if if, uh, if you cut them in strips... But the uh, reason I'm working, it's hard for me to hear anybody, even myself. Right. So that's about fish. Oh, I got one more piece. There's actually a piece in there, okay. too. Okay. I'm going to show it to you now, Judy. Okay. That's good. Now you want to add the eggs and the oil and the sugar. Do I want to put in the eggs here? Yeah. Okay. I'm using two eggs. Okay. And over here, I have some sugar. And you need the oil as well. The which one? I'm sorry. The oil. Ah. Half a, half a, 
Well, in the recipe, but you're going to use a quarter. Where's the sugar? Where did we do it? The sugar. I oh, know we have. It's had behind. Sugar. It's in the ramekin behind the. Uh, here, Mark. Oh. We is were so sugar? organized. Is that <laughs> I couldn't see it. All right. There's okay. the sugar. And I'm going to put in avocado oil because that's what I have. It's uh, It doesn't have much flavor. Um, Sounds healthy. And it's healthy. All right, let's put this back in. Now I'm going to put this I'm assuming, into this. Right. Got it. And then you're going to fill up the cup. I might say uh, I use a uh, cupcake pan for these. Right. Um, you is not nonstick, so you're going to try it with the paper cups inside, as you would for cupcakes. It's still going to look really pretty on your plate. I'm trying to get all the fish out. Okay. And we're going to be using that again in a minute. Ah, who is it? Maggie? No, Marilyn. Marilyn? Yeah. Okay. Does she have a question? Do you have she a question? You are marvelous. She's saying, cousin, you are marvelous. Ah. <laughs> I think that's great. She's one of my big fans. <laughs> well, we appreciate you watching. So I'm mixing it all up. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to move this over here, and our magic kitchen fairy mm -hmm. is going to clean all this up, because we're going to use it again in another minute. Okay. So the recipes you're featuring today are really easy, food processor recipes. Of course, my grandmother, when she made built a fish, chopped everything by hand. She didn't have a food processor. Right. And yes, according to my aunt, yes, the fish would be floating in the bathtub until she was ready for them. No now, way. She put it in the bathtub? Mm -hmm, because the fish were bought in those days uh, fresh. Well, I remember now, my grandmother my making, mother, making my this. My mother did not remember. My mother did not remember any such thing, but my aunt Sally felt informed me that she could remember. She was old. She could remember actually seeing the fish in the bathroom. Kind of. Um, I remember my grandmother buying whitefish, pike. I'm not sure what else. Yeah. Um, and we're gonna have. Look it up because I remember this is the very same thing. Right. So this uh, I'm going to start filling. And oh. Okay, without checking, the other ingredient was carp. And that on the East Coast, those fish are common. And so the real Gibraltar fish is made with white fish. And, um, and, and there's a little bit of carp in there too. Pike, white fish, pike, and carp. Right. That's And then. Then my grandmother, and she told me her secret was, because she did this by hand, mm -hmm. that the secret was her knuckles sometimes would get into the batter of the gefilte fish. And I said, okay. you want me to eat that? Don't tell me that. Yeah. <laughs> no knuckles were harmed in the creation of this program. Thank heavens. Thank heaven. Yeah. Because you know, Judy, I would cry. So let's talk while I'm doing this 
and, and Carol is cleaning the Cuisinart. Um, tell us about your background. Have you always been interested in food other well, than eating it? Certainly, my family was very interested in eating it. And uh, I was an English teacher first for my illustrious career lasted a year and a half till I got pregnant with my first. And years later, I became a court reporter. I always wanted to write, but I never in my wildest dreams thought I would become a food writer. Food, which was the nemesis of my life, became my career. So it's really kind of odd how that all happened. Well, I have to tell you that not only does Judy write the book, she's a columnist for the Orange County Register, which, by the way, is big time showbiz, in case you didn't know. And... Sure. We're having technical dif- difficulties. Yeah, the the garbage right. disposal. <laughs> now oh, I'm going to okay. show you my. We have some leftover. Um, um, a little bit messier than I predicted, but okay. Going to show you these in just one second. Tell you what, I'll wipe oh, that looks- off here. That looks very nice. These look great. Now they're going to bake for about 25 minutes. Um, yeah, that should do it. Because I have them in a convection oven. Oh, and- then you better check it earlier. I, I don't cook with a conven- convection oven. Mine is old and it's hanging on right now. <laughs> I, um, that's like check me, old and hanging on. Never mind. <laughs> now, with right. convection, aren't you supposed to go 25 degrees cooler? Not necessarily. I find that they cook, it cooks faster. And it's, uh, I see. thank you. What it, what a convection oven is, you know, air fryers are very popular right now. And sure. what a convection oven is, is actually a large air fryer. Okay. Okay. So. All right. So. Carol, earlier, I did want to go over to the uh, oven. I'm making poor Carol work her. Well, work she's hard. a great assistant. All I right. did want to say. All the. Oven. I serve the appetizers in one bowl. I believe you have a photo of that. Yes. I mean, one plate. Did want to mention that? Oh, is that gorgeous? As you can see, uh, there's the salmon at 11 o'clock. There's the salmon gefilte fish. Oh, excuse me. Salmon timbal. Next next to it to the right is the uh, Yemen roasted truffle, which we're going to make in a little bit. And the reason I put it on the appetizer plate is it's heroset. It's a form of heroset. That doesn't mean I'm not making my regular heroset. There would be a mutiny if I didn't make the Ashkenazi regular heroset. But I like to put it on this plate because if I serve it with dessert, with the dessert, you know, we've made this huge dessert display and it's just going to be lost in there. To the right of that at about three o'clock is the Ashkenazi carrots and um, apples, sorry, apple uh, and nut harosa, and I like to use pecans. But my big um, uh, uh, instruction for that is to please toast the nuts. In the in the book, I say, toast thy nuts. And anybody who's <laughs> taking my cooking knows that I'm very, very strict about that. I toast nuts before everything. The only time I don't toast, may not toast nuts in a recipe is when I'm baking a cake and let's say the nuts are right on top, then it's not necessary to get toasted anyway. Got it. And also in that picture, I want to mention one other thing is there's a little tiny egg in there. Now people like to serve a hard boiled egg. It's a symbol of spring rebirth, which is part of the theme of, of Passover. But my opinion is you've gone through all this trouble to make this beautiful meal. Why are you filling your guests up with a hard boiled egg? My mother was the brilliant one that had the idea of getting quail eggs for that purpose. 
practice. So the egg is on that plate too, as well as the parsley. Everything you need for the ceremony and your appetizer is on that plate. And it really does look pretty if you can uh, flash the picture of the table setting with them all set up this way. Uh, watch this table setting. It is gorgeous. And, and everybody's got the same plate. And I think that's really nice. So, by the way, the oven is set at 350. I believe that's what the recipe calls for, right? All right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, also from the fine people, and that's Robert at, at uh, Melissa's Food. Mo Robert introduced you and me. Uh, Robert has introduced me to a whole bunch of people, and we really appreciate that. Um, and Melissa's Foods, are, our produce is just outstanding. All right. I have a food processor here. I have right here apricots, uh, dried apricots, dried um, figs. What else do we need? Raisins and dates. All right. Um, you know what? I think they're all in here. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Yes. Oh, everything okay. but the dates. I got to put some dates in. You know how I like figs, by the way? I like figs um, with cream. Have you ever done that? Mm. No. They're really good. Um, these arrived... They're locked away. Come Mark, on. did you use um, black figs? What kind of figs you got in there? I'm sorry? Say that again. What kind of figs are you using? I use black I like figs. I, like I use those. black figs. I've got, uh, we have some gold figs too, uh, but I chose the black ones. Okay, I just warn people to be careful and take off the stems before you do it. Oh, now you tell me. All right, I got to go back in there, get these up. Yeah, you, you wouldn't want to eat those. No. Yeah, so that's pretty easy to pull apart. Yeah, I'm doing it by hand, just pulling them off. <laughs> okay. We're very casual here, Judy. You don't, you don't want to break it too. No. No. Good. All right. I'm going to throw in some dates. Excuse me. I'm going to throw a date in here. I'll show you where. And dates are very healthy for you. I think we're going to grind this up first. Well, you want to show your, um, if you're going to do it in order, you would have, or what you've already done is grind up the almonds for the coating of right. these. Uh, and I can so show you've that. already done. I have some toasted almonds right here. Whoop. Oh, good. Thank you, Carol. Perfect. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right there. And They're we're going to roll them in there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, one more. Okay. Okay, so before you turn on the food processor, you can put in the rest of the ingredients. The honey, orange liqueur, and spices. All right. Now, my hands are wet. I couldn't open the honey. Okay. <laughs> Tap it. <laughs> okay. So if you were making the full recipe, it would be two and a half tablespoons. So I just, I just take a tablespoon measure and do a little less on the yeah. last table. Yeah. I'm sorry? A little bit more? Okay. And for the orange liqueur, you could have Grand Marnier, Sec. We're going to use uh, some Grand Marnier. Okay, that's what I did. Now I'm sticky. 
So let me unstick. Grand Marnier is, is one of my favorite liqueurs. Um, and as you said, we could use triple sec, but I figured what the heck. Go all the yes. way. Yes. So, it's a holiday. Yeah. And now we're going to add some cinnamon. How much cinnamon? Uh, if you use the whole recipe, it's one and a half teaspoons. I'm not sure what you're doing. So Did you do I'm a whole like, recipe? Or... You're going to wing it. No, I'm winging it. I wing it every week. Okay. Got some ground you know cumin. What we call that, you know what we call that kind of cooking, don't you? When no. Jewish cooks cook like that, when you just throw it in? No, it's what's called it called? Shitterine. <laughs> Shitterine. Got it. A little of this. <laughs> A little, a little of that. that. And then there's nobody knows the recipe. Right? All right. So this is cumin. Look. So it was an eighth of a teaspoon if you did the whole recipe. So be careful there. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of cumin. There. That's good. And All then right. I've got some ginger to put in mm -hmm. here, too. Half, half a teaspoon. There, that'll do it. Um, the, the recipe actually calls for cloves, and I am not a clove person. Um, you remember drink, uh, chewing clove gum as a kid? Uh, yeah, it was not good. And, and they still make it. All right. That's okay. You can modify the recipe with the spices that you enjoy. So now I'm going to grind this all up. Yeah. See how we're doing. It should be into a paste, shouldn't it? Okay. Now you don't want to go any further then. Let's take a look at it. I think it needs more. A little more. I forgot to ask, or forgot to mention that you can also is the food editor for Jewish Life. Orange County Jewish Life magazine. Congratulations. Take this off. What do you yeah. think? It's 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 firm. Um, okay, I my instruction in the recipe is to put it in the refrigerator for a little bit. If it's not firm enough to form into balls, um, oh, it's firm. The, the, I just made some the other day, and I'm going to freeze them as well. I've invited been invited to two seders, so I'm going to bring some, and they they. Um, I was able to mold them just fine, so put your hands in there and see. And Sue, so, by the way, said that she loved the appetizer plate. Now, I'm putting on, good. I don't have gloves, so I'm using plastic okay. bags. I'm going to take this out. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Hmm? Now, is it too or are you able to form them? No, I can form. I can feel it. Isn't that great? Okay, terrific. You know what I'm going to have and trouble let me, with? Let me see if I can show mine. Yes. Can you see these? Yes. Okay, so I I made I made these the other day. And um, we use these little cups. Like you buy for candy. The, the regular um, cupcake papers are too big for these. So these are the little ones that I put on that appetizer plate. So you're going to roll them in the chopped nuts first. Chopped toasted. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off 
Okay. Put this out here. I'm going to get sticky again. I know. Now this really is almost ready to eat. I, I'm going to tell you because you know the hell with these. <laughs> I'm going to roll it into a ball. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yep. My. Oh, I'm, I'm really that you're able to form them. That's great. No, it formed really well. Okay. And let's see, how many do I get out of them? I'm going to get, let's see, there's, I don't know. I don't think, how many? I the, get 20 to 24 out of the whole recipe. You need to check the other uh, no. You know, and it depends on how big you're going to make them. I should make them maybe a little smaller. That one. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Carol, you gonna check it? All right. Here we go. Now I'm bringing okay. these to a um, a family member. And we'll, for their Seder, that's Yeah, tough. so you have two weeks till tomorrow. From tomorrow, you have two weeks for Passover. Right. And I'm just the real bug on fresh. To me, everything's got to be fresh. Yes, um, me too. So you, you can freeze these. So They freeze quite well. Got it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here. You know what we're going to do before I do anything else? Uh -huh. We're going to check the oven. Oh, see how your salmon is doing. Let's look inside. Okay, they are not browning up, but they will. Okay, they don't really get brown, ah. but the way you pet test if they're done is just stick your finger in them and see if they're firm. Okay, I could do that. I mean, they get a little brown, but not really. Oh, yeah, they're firming up. Oh, that's nice. Okay. So All you right, be now, the judge of where you want to go. You know, Carol, what I think we should do is take the uh, small Cuisinart, unless you can clean that one quickly. And that's sticky. So, <laughs> can you use the small one? Yeah, we can. I think we can use the small one. Should work out real well. Okay. Here. I'll just give it a wipe. Cuisinart, you should have given us three Cuisinarts. This is basically the. <laughs> well, I usually don't make all three of these things on the same day. No. Yeah. Carol, can you take this? Got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. What I'm going to do now is we're going to roll the the um, uh, truffles in the. Oh. Judy, these look almost as good as yours. They then, they look beautiful. Where is Mark? Yes. Well, while you're doing that, I thought of the answer to the question you asked me before about gefilte fish being served on Passover. Right. I don't know that it's a particularly Passover dish. It's, uh, it's, it's a Sabbath dish. We do that for Shabbat. We use gefilte fish for every holiday. And the reason is, years ago, fish was really expensive in Eastern Europe. And it was considered to be kind of a like a holy thing to 
to celebrate a holiday or celebrate Shabbat. So the filter fish was invented by these wonderful cooks in Eastern Europe who wanted to spread out this little bit of fish that they could afford into something that they could serve that everybody could enjoy. The Hasidim especially thought that it was imbued with some kind of mystical quality that fish wow. was. So that's how it got started. And so it became something very special for Shabbat and for holidays. Maybe not for Passover alone, but we serve gefilte fish, you know, for Rosh Hashanah or lots of holidays as well. Well, I serve it for lunch. As I say, I do too, because you can freeze those tin balls. Right. All right. Well, those look beautiful. You're doing great. Thank you. Almost. Well, we made 11. There you go. <laughs> we okay. Close enough. 11. I ran out of stuff. So uh, yeah. what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in the refrigerator for a few minutes while we make the horseradish. How's that? Okay. Good. Let's do it. Do we need to check the oven first? Now, I'm going to show, yeah. since your horseradish is cut up, I got these radishes from Melissa which uh, Robert asked me, uh, Robert supplies me with every year. And really the hardest part about the, this one's kind of a little odd shape. The hardest part of this recipe is just um, getting that darn skin off, peeling the damn thing. But once you've done that, it's really an easy recipe. You just do it in the food processor again. I do caution people that the very first time I made this, I reached over the open food processor to turn on the light, and my sinuses haven't been the same since. So that's my <laughs> <only> caution. <laughs> I get it. Um, and if, if you notice the recipe in my cookbook, the first two instructions, I was given this recipe by my dear cousin, Harold Rubin, who was Lou Bauer's son-in-law. Lou Bauer is, um, he's the one that uh, actually gave me the rest, uh, started the recipe. So his first instructions was one, open all kitchen windows. Two, remove all flowers and plants from the kitchen. That was Harold's addition to the recipe because uh, horseradish will really clear your sinuses. Wow. Well, I have to tell you that you have to be careful with the horseradish because it can um, remove the hairs in your nose, uh, if you're not <laughs> careful, right? Um, I have uh, cleaned some horseradish. As you can see, it's, um, it, it's, it's rustic, uh, uh, it's rough, uh, there's dirt in there. Um, and uh, so I've cleaned some. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a knife and Cut this into pieces. Mm -hmm. Sure, be easy. So, you must have been a really good peeler to get that yeah. off. A I nice did. Sharp one. And um, before I do anything else, I'm going to turn off the oven. Mm -hmm. You can pull them out. If they're done, you can pull them out. Our you know, just fish. Give, if it feels firm, they're done. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, of course, you're going to um, be tasting them warm, and we usually serve it cold. And... Um, you know, you wait for it to cool down, then you can put those in the refrigerator. I suggest that you, before you serve them, you take them out for about 30 minutes because you don't want them ice cold. They'll, they'll, they'll be tastier if they're just like a little more. Temperature? Yeah. Okay. So I've got this chopped. I'm going to throw this into the Cuisinart. Okay. This would be horseradish. Almost done here. I'm going to grind these first, I think, and then we'll mix the other yeah. things in. Yeah. So 
So you're just shredding them at this point. I'm sorry? You're just shredding them at this point. Just the, just the horseradish alone. Yes. And I'm going to grind okay. them. too far. It looks good. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, don't lean over the food processor. Oh, but it smells so good. It's good. And but it, 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 it does get you. Okay. It does. So, so I'm going to, should I put the um, other ingredients, which is yeah, sugar so and beets, into the, the, into the processor? Yeah, you want the beets with the liquid, but you're doing half a recipe, so somehow figure out if you've got a 16 ounce can there i can't see what you have you i've know. got um we had some of the beans ounce can some of the and it yeah okay that's good and the salt sugar and vinegar let's see i had the add just a tad of kosher salt kosher salt by the way is just coarse salt right and chefs like it because they can feel how much to put in. A lot of people can substitute a coarse sea salt for kosher salt. Um, the recipe calls for regular white vinegar or red wine vinegar. I tend to use the red wine. Ah. So the full recipe is a quarter of a, a cup, so that would be two, two tablespoons if you're doing half. And you and I talked about... You're going we to mix both it. Like, we both oh, this like um, sweet uh, gefilte fish, right? So in my horseradish, I made it a little sweet. And then I have... Yeah, there, there's sugar in the recipe. Right, and I have white vinegar. Okay. And now we'll mix it all together. Mark, you may need to add some water to that. Ah. So what what you the caution is you don't want to over process it or it'll just be liquid. So you can add if you see the consistency that you have, you can add you did half, so up to two tablespoons of water. Got it. Uh, good judgment. Did you get the sugar in there? Yes. Yes. And one of the things that I have learned is that you pulse the processor. Yeah. Right. Oh, I think it's. Taste it, and you'll see if you need more salt, sugar, vinegar, whatever you, you know the way the way you like. All right, let's see what happens. Be here. careful. <laughs> it's yeah. gonna be hot. All right, here we go, guys. Okay, hang on to the counter. I am. <laughs> well, you're not that's breathing good. fire. Good sign. That's really good. Um, no, oh, that's good. <laughs> okay. All right. That's good. Oh. I'm going to get a plate now. You got a comment. Okay. We got a comment. Oh, hey, Heidi. Gorgeous horseradish. Gorgeous horseradish. Yes. Hot, gorgeous. Heidi. Heidi, welcome back. It's been a long time. Thank you for watching. <laughs> we miss you. We'll talk. <coughs> All right, that's the horseradish, folks. That is really... I have to tell you, well, hold on, Judy. Wait, wait, wait. All right. This is the best horseradish I've ever had. Fantastic. No, it's fresh. It's it's not um, over processed as you said. There, it's. I don't want to use the word chunky, but it is really good. Mm. I'm, I'm glad. 
Are you going to try it with this with the fish? Yeah. Okay. So the now fish. Now you mentioned, of Mark, you mentioned that both you and I like it a little sweet. Yes. That's, we, that's because we're both glitzianas. Yes, that's true. I hadn't thought. So I'm actually only a half glitziana. I I'm the product of a mixed marriage. My mother was a Litvak and my father was a glitziana. I, but I, I don't know. I, do have um, I know that my grandfather on my mother's side was, uh, his parents were from Lithuania, so he was a Litvak. Mm -hmm. but, and I don't know about the others. So here is our, I, I'm going to pick this up. You can see it here. Looks good. Okay, and it's formed. Oh, okay. the, and the and the cupcake, uh, the paper did work. You were able to peel it off. That's great. Yes, okay, that's it great. came right off. No, because not everybody has a um, non-stick pan. No, well, you're in the okay. fancy part of town. Mm-hmm. So get... <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm going to take a little bit of the horseradish. Okay. Dip that in. This is really good. And it'll be even better when it's a little colder. Oh, I can't wait for dinner. But I Here's another comment. Gary, yeah, it looks good, Judy. Yeah, I did all the work, Gary. I mean, it's her recipes, but I did the work. No, I'm sorry. Open the windows. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> Open the windows. I was just bossing him around. He's it. cooking. Oh. And do you want to have truffle for dessert? Open your windows. Yes. <laughs> and Heidi is looking forward to uh, to this. All right, we have we have something else to taste. As I say in most of our shows, I really like my cooking, but I this is all Judy. This is really, really good. If, I mean, oh my. Okay. I think it's time for dessert, Mark. Yes. Now, um, uh, the horosis traditionally is, um, horosis is, is like the, 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 the the mortar, the right, mortar. Mm -hmm. that that held the bricks together when uh, the pyramids were being built. That's the significance. I don't need that one. Um, so I'm going to find one here. Here we go. Okay. Really up, good. Even without the even without the clothes, right? Even without the better, without the cloves. Gary, Gary, always time for dessert. Always time for dessert. Sounds like you, Carol. Always time for dessert. Hmm. <laughs> Listen. Well, I'm glad you. I, uh, Judy, you're fabulous. This is. Well, thank you. In less than an hour, we have made. Isn't it less than an hour? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we have made three dishes, really four if you include the horseradish, which I dearly love. Will that take, uh, uh, will that last a long time? Oh, you must freeze them. That's why I make the full recipe. I don't can. If you want to do canning, I will eat something you've canned, but I am too nervous about that. If I make a mistake, <laughs> I'm not canning, but what I do do is I make the full recipe and I fill up little jars and I put them in the freezer. And believe me, your your uh, host or who, wherever you're going for Passover, they will appreciate if you bring them a little jar. My daughter-in-law, Tracy, loves horseradish. And I just came back from Northern California where we did Passover early, three weeks early, because that's when the kids could come home. And I brought the whole meal up on the plane 
Southwest allows you to bring frozen food as long as you put it in their lined box. Right. And we had a sale last weekend. I think that's terrific. Uh, Mary, uh, you've, um, go ahead, Carol, read it. Mary Gorfine, you've inspired me to try something new this year. Your ne recipes never disappoint. You're, you're oh, terrific. Nice. Listen, I, you, I really thank you a lot, uh, uh, Judy. I know this is a little bit messy, but will you come back uh, maybe for uh, Rosh Hashanah in September? I'd love to. Okay. Absolutely. I'll look for the great dishes to try. All right. That'd be great. Uh, you can watch for um, Judy's column in the Orange County Register, also in Orange County Jewish Life, right? And buy her book. Yes, uh, this is in Sorry. South Media. Now, Mark, yeah. When I come to your house, I want to see the full book. <laughs> okay? Not yeah. pristine like that. I like it used. Well, I I have to tell you, I just pulled out my my uh, my my paper because okay. I I wasn't sure if I had printed out the uh, horseradish recipe. But okay. uh, anyway, all right. Thank you, and be careful. Do not drop this on your foot. <laughs> yes. It's that big. Judy, you, you're terrific. You rock. Again, I wanted to thank uh, Judy. I want to thank uh, Robert from Melissa's. You got it. Absolutely. Thank you, my dear. And um, thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. Um, this week, Wednesday at our regular time, 4 o'clock, we're going to have Royal Wines, um, and uh, we're going to do a, a kosher wine tasting for Passover. So join us then, won't you? Thank you very much. Have a great day. It's a beautiful day here in Southern California. I hope it's beautiful where you are as well. Bye-bye for now. Hold on, Judy.